Hey, it's Dave here. Today I'm reviewing the SenseCap Watcher by Seed Studio, but not the stock version that works with the SenseCraft app. This one runs the Saojung MCP firmware, making it behave more like a chatbot with a camera and screen, instead of navigating through menus to run tasks. Now, just to keep things simple in this video, I'm going to refer to the hardware as the Watcher and the software as MCP firmware. That way it's easier to follow along without me tripping over the pronunciations every time. And just to be clear, this isn't a technical step-by-step -step guide. It's a straight review, what I like, what I don't like, what I think could be improved, and where I see this device going in the future. For transparency, Seed Studio did send me this device for free, but I'll keep my thoughts completely honest and not influenced by that. So let's dive in and see if the watcher is worth your attention. The watcher is essentially an ESP32 based device with a camera, microphone, screen and speakers. An earlier variant shipped with the stock firmware, which relies on the SenseCraft app, is more menu driven and app focused. This MCP firmware build takes a different approach. It leans into being an AI chatbot using the screen and camera as part of your interactions. There's definitely potential here, but a few tweaks and improvements are still needed, which I hope to see in future updates. That's what I'll be covering in this video. So this is the Watcher, and it kind of reminds me of one of those old school stopwatch timers. You've got a scroller wheel here where you can adjust the volume up and down. And if you press down, you can activate listening. And then if you press again, you can put it back into standby. Now, in order to turn this off, it does seem that you have to have that K1 plugged. Then you press and hold for about three to five seconds and it should turn off like it just has. The screen itself is touch screen, but in this firmware, it doesn't seem to be enabled. You've also got the camera at the front and the USB-C cable is here, which is for both charging and flashing the firmware. If I just flip it over, you also notice there's another USB-C cable here, but this is only for power source only. You've got some extra GPIO pins, and you've got a Grove port, which is just for future development and expansion. And because of the transparent case, you've probably noticed it's got a built-in backup battery, which is handy if you want to move it around for a bit without any cables attached, but don't expect it to last all day. It's really more of a backup source and should be connected to a mains power source. If I just unplug the cable, you can see it still functions. I can adjust the volume up and down, turn on listening and put it back to standby. Now let's try out one of its AI features. I'm going to ask it a question to take a photo and describe what it can see. Take a photo and tell me what you can see. All right, let me snap a quick pic and see what's in front of us. I see a red apple, a small bottle of McCoon syrup with a blue cap, and a bottle of orange juice with a brown cap on a white tray near a computer monitor. So it's got two of those three items, right? It did seem to get the decaf copy wrong. Now, one of the shames about this is you can't rotate the camera because ideally I'd want to hold it like this and also be able to see the camera view before taking the photo. It doesn't appear either to allow you to see a live stream. It only shows you the camera image after it's taken a picture. So it's almost like you're forced to take a blind selfie Maybe in future updates, they might change that so that you can actually see a permanent stream of the video. And then when you give it the go ahead, it's going to actually take a photo. So at least you know you're correctly aiming at the object you want to take a photo of. Now, while obviously I know what these objects are, and you might ask, well, why don't you just use your own eyes? Well, if you think of someone who's potentially vision impaired, this kind of technology could be a game changer because it's going to enhance their own vision. And the way AI bots are going, and now that they can analyze images, we could reach a stage where you could have a conversation with an AI bot, and based on your facial expression, it could tailor the conversation based on your moods. 
So it'd be quite interesting to see where that's going in the future. Now I'm going to go on to another example, but this time I'm going to get it to take a photo of some items and I want it to make a healthy choice as to which object I should be consuming. Now let's see if it's clever enough to realize what is and isn't healthy. I'm trying to eat healthier and I want to choose which object I should consume. Can you take a photo and tell me? All right, let me take a quick look at what you've got there. I see a red apple and a can of beer on the tray. If you're aiming to eat healthier, go for the apple. It's nature's candy. So that seems to work quite well. Now, in terms of Home Assistant integration, there's a Hacks repository you'll need. If you do a search for MCP, and don't confuse it with the similarly named ones like this. I tried that one and saw others on GitHub reporting the same issues where they were unable to get it to work. Once you have installed it, you'll need to go over to the following web page, create an account and link your device. Then from settings, you can generate an MCP endpoint. And with that, you head back over to Home Assistant and paste that URL into the WebSocket access point field in the integration section. After that, it's just a matter of exposing entities you want to control through Home Assistant. And once that's done, you can simply turn on or off devices, which I'm about to demonstrate in a second. So now I'm gonna see if it can open the bedroom curtains and also I'm gonna get it to turn off the bedroom light. One cool thing is you've obviously noticed it's not plugged into USB cable, so it's good that the battery backup is useful for these sort of scenarios. Open bedroom curtains. Right on. Let's get that sunshine in. Oops, couldn't find the bedroom curtains. Maybe they're hiding? Let me check the setup. Ah, found them. We've got curtain E46A and curtain EB75 in the bedroom, both closed. Let's fix that. Sorted. Curtain E46A is open. Now opening EB75. And presto. Both bedroom. What it did there was pretty cool because I haven't named them as bedroom curtains and it was actually able to figure out what they are, identify both those devices and open them. Now let's try the lights. This should be a little bit easier. Turn off bedroom lights. Bedroom lights for you. Bedroom lights switched off. All dark and cozy now. Turn on bedroom lights. No problem. Turning on the bedroom lights now. Lights are back on. So that's pretty impressive. I like that. Now for those of you who want to go further and use other large language models, there is documentation that walks you through the process. It involves installing Diffy, the brains of the AI application, along with Xiaozhong ESP32 server. I'll link those resources in the description. For now though, I've only skimmed through those instructions and just experimenting with the default cloud portal to control my watcher. So as a final overview, it's definitely a cool product with potential but there's still a few features I'd like to see before I would consider it complete. Full ESP Home integration would be fantastic since it's already an ESP32 based device, plus wake word support like we're used to with other voice assistants, and the ability to activate or view the camera remotely so it could double up as a small surveillance device. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried one of these? How did you get on and what's your opinion? Drop your comments below so myself or others who are curious can have a read through them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.